Ladies and gentlemen, today I have the massive honor and privilege of introducing a new gun on my channel for the first time ever. And here it is, the FX Maverick. In this video, we are going to be running through some of the details, including the price, all the features, and some of the new technologies that um, make this gun different to other FX guns on the market and other PCPs in general. Let's start off with an overview. This is a PCP air gun, which means that it works off compressed, pre-charged air. It's a true bullpup, which means that unlike a rifle, the action is located behind the trigger assembly. It is available in 177, 22, 25 and 30 cal in a compact version, which is what I have right here with a 300cc bottle and a 500mm barrel and a sniper version with a 700mm barrel. It is regulated, it's actually got a double reg system, which is brand new, we'll get to that a bit later. It's got a power plenum, it's got the 18 shot magazine that you find on like the Crown and the uh, Wildcat Mark III, uh, 20 MOA Picatinny rail, kind of what you find on the impact and a similar tactical chassis with the AR-15 grip and adjustable trigger like you'll also find on the impact. Let's begin our walkthrough of these features by discussing form factor. Because if you look at this gun, you will almost certainly get some sort of feeling of deja vu, almost as if you've seen it before. Now this gun was actually originally called the Impact Light. The whole goal behind the Maverick is to offer something that can, can do what the Impact does, but at a lower price. The Impact is still the holy grail of tactical PCPs, but it's inherently more expensive and more time consuming to produce. Part of the reason it's more expensive to produce is that the main block is actually right here in the middle. So you've got your hammer spring, you've got your uh, valve assembly in here, um, and this has to extend all the way back to a rear block. So you've got two main blocks, and you've got a very complicated system that connects the two with lots of seals, which means um, more time to install all the seals, more testing to make sure it's not leaking. This design has many, many benefits, but obviously the downside is the fact that it's time consuming and expensive. So how to make the impact cheaper? Well, you build it on a Wildcat block and then you add features afterwards to increase the performance to bring it more up to sort of impact level. Remember I spoke about Deja Vu? Well, you'll definitely see a few um, aspects of this gun that will remind you of a Wildcat as well. And remember the Wildcat is a much simpler system to produce. The difference of course, and this is where the impact DNA comes in, is that this is a more tactical system with the chassis in the bottle and it has a greater potential for performance enhancement with the larger plenum, the double reg and a platform that opens the doors to a boatload of aftermarket modifications. You hear that Sabre Tactical, Craft and Lipped, PR Systems, Humor, Scandinavian air guns, get to work guys. <laughs> Let's talk about ergonomics. Very, very important part of, of choosing a gun. And what we have here is very, very similar to the Impact. So if you're familiar with the Impact, you'll pretty much know what to expect. You've got a, basically the same AR-15 grip, um, similar length of pull, similar cheek piece, similar feel with the, the bottle and the, the bar pod sitting in front here, and similar adjustable up and down butt pad, although the butt pad has been restyled a little bit. There are going to be many aftermarket upgrades for this gun. So for example, you can fit a height adjustable cheek piece in the future. You can fit a butt pad that can move forward and back, up and down. You can change your AR grip, grip and possibly put an arc rail in front. You can basically turn it into whatever you want. That's one of the massive advantages of having a sort of tactical system. You're not stuck with what you have. The cocking and magazine system is basically the same as the Wildcat Mark III. Uh, same magazine over here, and you've got the cocking lever, which is a side lever that sits directly above the pistol grip, so you can get that action in really quick. And with a bit of practice, you too <laughs> can win $3,000 at a speed competition and buy yourself two Mavericks. <laughs> the magazine gives you 18 shots in 22, and obviously a little bit more in 177 and a bit less in 25 and 30 and it's the same high capacity style that we all love. You simply pop the top off, rotate it around with your finger, fill it up and close. If you want extra magazines, these are available aftermarket, or you can get a few of these speed loaders from the guys at 68 Whiskey. They also do a great job of, you know, being able to store 
pellets or slugs beforehand and just transfer them over to the magazine whenever you need them. The trigger feels exactly the same as the Wildcat Mark III and that obviously makes sense because it's very much the exact same linkage system. Um, as I said in the Wildcat Mark III review, it's a very good trigger for a bullpup with that linkage system. It's not quite at the same level as the impact or crown trigger because the impact and crown trigger doesn't need that linkage system. But for a bullpup trigger, you're not going to find that much better than this. The Maverick has the exact same bottle system as the impact. And I absolutely love the system because the bottles have their own back valves, which means even if the bottle's full of air, you can, you can remove it and it'll hold its air. This opens the door for being able to switch your, your, your bottle lengths to match your barrel length. So for example here, short barrel we can put on the 300cc bottle. Um, if you want a 600ml barrel like the one on this impact over here, you can put a 480cc bottle on, which is a great match for this barrel length. And if you want a lot of air for let's say a, a high power slug um, gun with a 700ml barrel, you can put on this big 580. I'll just show you the, the length difference here between the 300 and the 580 very big difference and what's fantastic about having bottles you can remove and they hold their air is you can take a few extra bottles with you and chuck them in a backpack and if you're out let's say on a hunting trip you can take this is what I do I take my Aventuri Nomad compressor 12 volt compress compressor that connects to your vehicle I take a few of these bottles and I take a Humor a quick fill adapter for FX bottles with me plug it into the Nomad fill my bottle separately and you're good to go for the day, chuck them in your backpack, gives you hundreds and hundreds of shots per fill, even with a, a high air consumption setup, like let's say a, a, a high power slug setup. It's, it's a really great way to do it. In talking about changing your barrel options, the Maverick's about as versatile as it gets. It's very similar again to the, the impact setup. The main difference is actually just the shroud but everything else is the same. You've got the exact same uh, brass piece, same diameter, same barrel length, so you can buy the same barrels that you'd buy for an impact, and you can just remove this cheek piece on the back of the Maverick, loosen two set screws, and take the whole barrel out. Slides out very easily, and then obviously, because this is the Smooth Twist X barrel system that FX offers, you've got a liner inside your barrel housing, which you can switch out, so if you want a specific twist rate um, for a specific projectile let's say you want to shoot heavy slugs you can get the superior heavy liner which has a slightly faster twist rate and you can shoot like 40 grain slugs if you want which is great so very very modular system very versatile and i think this has kind of become the new standard even other manufacturers are starting to do this where you can change your barrel lengths and change your calibers um, but yep fx were the pioneers of this um, at least on a like commercial scale and it's cool to see them continuing in the same vein. The barrel is shrouded for noise reduction and threaded for a silencer, something like this Donny FL or a Hugget will keep the gun very very quiet. Just keep in mind when you change calibers you not only need to change your probe and magazine but you'll also need to change the power setting. It's not something you can just change over and expect to magically work. Thankfully this is one of the Maverick's strong points though. As with the Wildcat Mark III that I made a video of just a few weeks ago, the Maverick does have a hammer adjustment wheel. And there's more to this than meets the eye. You've got click adjustments from one to seven, so you can easily just switch between those settings. But there's also a setting here called adjust. If you turn it to adjust, you see a hole, sticker Allen key inside that hole, and that allows you to fine tune your hammer spring adjustment outside of those clicks. So Allen key in, fine tune, and you can really uh, get your hammer spring set to exactly where you want it, which is obviously really important if you've got the ability to change your rig pressure. I would say this is actually a absolute non-negotiable when it comes to things like caliber changes or even switching from one barrel length or one projectile weight to another because every setup needs to be balanced differently for optimum performance. And that balance hinges on the relationship between the working pressure and the hammer, which determines how long the valve is open for. If you have a short barrel like this, for example, it can absolutely kill your accuracy and your efficiency and even the sound of the gun if you've set up your, your hammer and your regulator wrong. You want that valve to be opening and closing at a very precise point. You want the valve to be closing before the pellet gets to the end of the barrel. That's kind of the secret formula to 
getting your balance correct and it all hinges on the ability to adjust. It's exactly like getting your timing right when swinging a cricket or baseball bat. You can put in the same amount of energy into your swing but if your timing is off the ball won't come off the bat sweetly. You want that energy to be transferred to the pellet and not wasted. I haven't really pushed this setup too hard yet but from what I'm told the Maverick is capable of the same power out output as the Impact which is quite something. It's not going to be the same right now as you're going to get from some of the, the custom aftermarket impacts like my Utah Air Gun Slug Gun that's got a whole lot of extra parts in it but that will come later. So what we will see eventually once those parts come I'm pretty sure is the capability to put 22 caliber up to like 75 foot pounds uh, 25 caliber to probably 90 foot pounds and a 30 caliber to well above 100 probably 110 but that's unproven yet let's see part of the reason this power is achievable is the valving which allows for better airflow than some previous fx models and the plenum or chamber that allows for the peak pressure to remain higher for longer when the valve is opened. And it's not just about power. I remember sitting maybe two years ago and we were testing the, the power plenum. I was at the FX factory. At that point, we kind of thought it was all about power, but we sat down behind a, a 30 caliber impact and we started shooting and we were able to get over a hundred shots per fill from a single bottle in 30 caliber at 80 foot pounds. That could not be done before. And it's all down to the uh, improved valving and the, the larger plenum space which allows you to put the reg pressure a little bit lower. Now keep in mind this is only a 300cc bottle but just take a look what we were able to do from a 250 bar fill in 22 caliber. Okay chronograph test pretty important we're going to do a full shot string starting from 250 bar which is our full pressure and we're going to shoot down until we see the velocity start to drop. It'll be very interesting to see what this gun can do. I've got the chronograph connected by Bluetooth, so you'll see the velocity right there. I've got a very dodgy looking <laughs> pellet trap out there because we are indoors in my brand new uh, magical workshop slash reloading room. And there may be bits of lead flying back at me, so very, very important. Safety first. <laughs> Let's do this. Six hours later. Okay, so we're on shot number 125. That means that we've already surpassed the number of shots that the impact, the original impact, gave us with a 480cc air cylinder when I did my impact review a few years ago. So what does that tell us? It tells us that even with a smaller 300cc bottle compared to 480cc bottle, we're getting more shots per fill at the same power. I would say that's a testament to the efficiency of the gun, obviously. Um, and I, would, I can only think that that comes from the valving and the power plenum. But let's keep on going. We still haven't reach that uh, we still haven't reached the end yet so let's see what we can do i'm gonna have to find a new ton of pellets soon <laughs> no. No. okay starting to drop now what's that shot count one three two okay that's where we're going to stop it 136 shots now let me just say this, this is a compact impact with a 300cc bottle. If you put a 580cc bottle and a 700mm barrel and you shoot these pellets at, at what, 900, 930 feet per second, you're going to get hundreds of shots per fill, hundreds. 580cc is, is almost double what you're getting from this and with a 700mm barrel you can use an even lower rig pressure, even lower hammer spring setting to get that speed. So. That's pretty impressive. Um, I think if I was to put a longer barrel on this and a, a bigger cylinder, I would want to shoot something heavier. I'd probably want to set the gun up for, for slugs or just very heavy, heavy pellets, although I think if you're going to go heavy, you might as well go slugs. But that's pretty crazy. I think that, uh, 
I think that we need to explore this a bit more in the future with, with the longer setup and some slugs and see what we can do. So let's analyze this a bit. Here are a couple graphs comparing guns that I've reviewed in the past. Keep in mind that some of these are pretty outdated and have since been replaced with newer versions, but at the time, these were some of the best selling air guns available, which shows how far we've come. These guns all had working pressures that were much higher, and this resulted in a lower shot count. My Air Arms S510 had a working pressure of around 170 bar for a 33 foot pound output. My Daystead Wolverine had a working pressure of 195 bar for a 29 foot pound output. Here's a graph comparing the Maverick to my Impact Mark 1 and Crown Mark 1 to show how even FX has progressed over the past few years. My early Impact and Wildcats had working pressures of about 135 bar for a 33 foot pound output. Because of the valving and plenum on the Maverick, we are only needing 105 bar to reach those same energy outputs and the result is superior efficiency. This gun with a 300cc bottle is giving us more shots than many 480cc bottle guns. I should mention that your reg pressure can also determine other things aside from accuracy and efficiency. You can turn your reg pressure up a little bit it may cause you to lose uh, a few shots per fill like you lose a bit of efficiency if you want to call it that but it can also tighten up your extreme spread which may be desirable if you're shooting in competition so for example if you want to achieve the same uh, output energy that i've just shown you in that test but you want a slightly tighter extreme spread you can turn your rig up to maybe 115 120 bar you'll lose a few shots per fill but you may, may gain in other areas. So that's just up to you to, to test and find out which, which uh, settings work best for what you're trying to achieve. Now this is where it gets interesting because finally we get to the big game changer that FX is touting on the Maverick and that is the double rig system. We have a regulator in the front, right behind the bottle, in the bottle adapter, and we have a second regulator just probably 10 centimeters behind that in a certain section on this uh, rear cylinder area over here. You may wonder what's the point of having two regulators. Well, it's because times are changing very quickly. A few years ago, if you bought a PCP, it came at a set power and you expected to shoot a specific pellet at a specific velocity range. So the manufacturer would know, okay, I've got to design my regulator in such a way with this many of these springs in order to achieve that pressure. But nowadays with slugs, with different barrel lengths, with the capability of being able to change calibers, we expect a lot more from our guns. We've got to be able to go from, let's say 80 bar in a sub 12 foot pound 177, maybe even below 80 bar, all the way up to 180 or 190 bar if you want to shoot very heavy slugs. That's more than 100 bar difference. It's just very unrealistic to expect your regulator to be able to work that hard across such a variety of uh, pressures without giving some sort of problem if you have a reg pressure of let's say 150 bar and you're filling to 200 well that's no problem that's only a 50 bar pressure differential that the regulator has to deal with but if you're filling your cylinder to 250 bar and you have your reg set to 80 bar that's 170 bar of pressure that your poor regulator is going to deal with so it's very likely that you're going to see a little bit of reg creep in the same way when you're trying to shoot at very high powers and are setting the reg to 170, 180, 190 bar, and the reg's designed to be used all the way down to 80, you're pushing it very hard and you're very likely to see other issues as well. What the double reg system essentially allows you to do is to set your first reg, which is in the front close to your bottle, let's say 20 to 30 bar higher than your second reg, so that you can set your second reg to whatever you want, but it never has to deal with that crazy um, pressure differential and it can kind of do its job without having to ever push itself. Think of it as using a series of step down gears in a machine instead of expecting one gear to take all the strain. This basically uh, opens the door for FX to start using um, 300 bar bottles even at very low reg pressures. And you know what that means, that means more shots per fill, even more than what you just saw earlier. To finish this video off, we're going to head to the range because accuracy is really important. We'll put the longer barrel on, we'll put the 580cc bottle on, maybe put some slugs inside and see what the slugs can do at long range. Right, so accuracy testing, I've got good news and I've got bad news. 
The good news is that my 700 millimeter barrel arrived. So I've put the 580cc bottle on and I've tuned the gun in a way that we can, we can get pretty much um, all the different weight varieties in one rig setting. So I've set the rig to 135 bar. That allows me just with the turn of the, the hammer adjust at the back, not with a fine tuning adjustment, just the hammer adjustment to go all the way from 16 grain pellets, albeit maybe shooting a little bit hot, 950 feet per second, all the way up to 30 grain javelin slugs at 915 feet per second, just by changing the hammer adjuster. So we're gonna see what this gun can do on a very versatile reg setting. It may not be 100% fine tuned for every single pellet or slug, but we're gonna see what it can do. We're gonna start off with a 16 grain JSBs at 950 feet per second. We're gonna go up to the FX hybrid slugs, 22 grain. I think we're probably gonna shoot these around 970. Uh, then we're gonna to go to 25 grain JSB monster redesigns, which generally shoot very well at 50 meters. Then the 26 grain javelin slugs at 970, and then the 30 grain javelin slugs at 915. We're gonna go through all of them at 50, and we, then we're gonna move on to 100, and in between each shot, I'm just gonna take a few shots at the sighted target at the bottom, just to get myself more or less sighted in, and also to kind of file up the barrel, because when you're switching between different leads, um, different projectiles, different lubricants on the projectiles, you want your barrel to kind of get used to it before you start shooting your groups, so that's what we're gonna do. The bad news is that the wind is, is blowing. Unfortunately, I've waited for two weeks for the wind to, to get better this is as, be as good as it gets here unfortunately where i live the wind is constantly constantly blowing it's around eight to nine miles an hour this morning um from the side which is is not ideal but as i said that's the best we're going to get so take the results with a pinch of salt in calm conditions the groups will be tighter but hey let's see what let's see what this gun can do If this gun can shoot well in this wind, then you know it's good. <laughs> right, the wind is still blowing, same as it was for the previous group, but we're now shooting the hybrids, which are a bit heavier, much higher BC than the pellets, at 970 feet per second. I've turned it up to power three. So I think you're gonna see a lot less wind drift. I've literally turned the, the windage adjustment an entire mill <laughs> for the wind, because it's drifting one whole mill less than the 16 grand pellets. So, you're gonna see that in these groups. Well, you won't because I've, I've adjusted for it, but let's just uh, see what we can do here. Second target from the left, hybrid slugs. Okay, 25.4 grain JSP Monster redesigns. Third target from the left, just under a thousand feet per second. These pellets like to be shot fast, so this should be interesting. They're drifting a little bit more than the than the hybrids, but a lot less than the eight the sixteen grains. Right, twenty six grain javelin slugs, none seventy five feet per second. Not bad. So that group is mm, very similar to the rest, maybe ever so slightly larger, but those slugs out of everything we've tried so far, the least wind drift. And they're probably gonna hit the hardest as well because they've got the most weight behind them and a massive hollow point. So in wind like this, that would again be my first choice. In calm conditions, you'd probably outshoot them with the pellets, but I'm really impressed with that. Okay, last one, 30 grain javelins, let's do it.
you're not going to get much better than this from 50 meters in these conditions. Um, JSP 16 grain, FX hybrids, JSP 25.4 grain redesigns, uh, 26 grain javelins and 30 grain javelins. I'd say the two best groups were the 25.4 grain monsters and the 30 grain javelins. If you take away those those two shots that just went a bit up the group, those are basically just one ragged whole group. And in these conditions, that's brilliant. I would say the monsters be very careful because at 100 meters they, they tend to start to destabilize. But let's test that. Let's take it out to 100. I don't think we're going to really learn much about the gun at 100 in these conditions, to be 100% honest with you. But it's a great, great opportunity to show you at that particular power setting what different projectiles will do to help you choose what to shoot out of your Maverick if you choose to buy one. So let's go do it. Oh, dead center. What? Dead center again. Okay. I must say that's not bad for this wind at all considering the wind drift and everything but I have a feeling the other projectiles are going to do a little bit better but let's see not bad I think it's probably similar size to the pellet group a lot less wind drift less than half the wind drift so I'll let you be the judge of that one JSP Monsters, I'm not expecting these to do well at 100, they never do. They're usually laser accurate out to about 75 and then they just start to destabilize. But let's see, let's see what they can do. Oh, the wind really took that last one. That is why you do not use pellets at 100 if you can help it. The Monsters, they may be heavy for a pellet, but they do not have the same high BC that you'd get from a slug. Even a light slug like the hybrids, I would still take the hybrids over the monsters any day of the week. 26 grain javelin slugs. Let's see what they can do. I have a good feeling about these just because of the high BC. They will cut through the wind pretty well, I think. <laughs> Let's test it. center oh okay I think that was the best of the lot makes sense strong wind conditions high ballistic coefficient will always win what did surprise me, there was the little 16 grain JSPs. I know I had to hold a lot uh, for the wind, which is really not ideal at all. But I think they group fairly tightly for these conditions. But I think that's a wrap. Let's go check it out. Okay, here's the verdict. And, and just our luck, looks like the wind's just starting to die down now as, I, as I'm talking. <laughs> but here's the verdict. The best group by far were the 30 grain javelins. I did expect that because... With all the wind, normally a um, high ballistic coefficient is going to be the winner. Second best was surprisingly the 16 grain JSP, surprisingly just because they're so light and they were drifting like three times as much as, as, the, as the 30 grain slugs in the wind and dropping a lot more as well. Uh, third best I would say is probably the hybrid slugs, although the vertical dispersion is quite bad on the hybrids for some strange reason. Fourth best was probably the 26 grain slugs followed by the worst which was the JSP monsters and as I said I expected the monsters to do badly they're not a hundred yard pellet they just uh, past 75 they su they're such an unstable shape especially if you've got a crosswind they tend to start wobbling so I would I would stick with 50 meters and under if you're using the monsters but yeah these um, that's that's definitely a sub MOA group so I'm really happy with that in these conditions to shoot a sub MOA group without changing your aim point is quite something and especially with pellets, that's probably an inch and a half, maybe a bit less. Um, and this is 100 meters, not 100 yards. So 
really 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 happy with that and this was all done on the same reg setting just changing the hammer spring adjuster so the maverick is an extremely versatile gun i should mention that the line i'm using is a superior heavy liner not a superior liner i wanted to be able to shoot the heavier slugs so i think if you were using a superior liner you might see the the hybrids do better and the 16 grain JSBs do a little bit better but only marginally there's not a big difference nowadays between the superior and the superior heavy the main difference is actually the twist rate now they've made some changes on there so I think you'd probably find that with a standard superior the 30s would do worse um, the 25s and 26s would probably do quite similar and the hybrids and the 16 and 18 grain JSBs will probably do a bit better on a standard liner but I wanted to show the versatility and I think we did that very well super happy so what can i say in closing about the maverick well i can't tell you how how you're going to experience it because obviously no one on earth has one yet apart from a small handful of people who've been testing them so i'm going to leave that assessment to yourselves once they're available go out in forums read what people's experiences are and make a decision i personally think it's going to be a big hit mostly because it opens the door to a very modular system like the impact the impact as it is as a stock standard gun is great but it's all those aftermarket parts and the ability to make it whatever you want which which makes it such an exciting gun i've turned my guns into such interesting um, tools because of everything that's available and it's it's really just changed the game completely um, impact at the start and impact now are uh, night and day apart and I think this gun is going to be very much the same so I think as we see after um, aftermarket parts starting to come out all the things to change the ergonomics all the internal bits to be able to, to change power there's some exciting new um, technologies that can be fitted to the gun that are also being worked on that I, I can't discuss but I think it's, we're going to see this gun becoming very popular especially considering the price point I believe the price is going to be around $1,400 retail in the US, which is significantly cheaper than the Impact. I will put the exact price down below in a pinned comment so that you can see at the time of publishing this video what it is. But I know it's going to be cheaper than the Impact, and I think that's the big thing to remember here. It may not be quite as refined as the Impact is in terms of um, just the way it's built, but the fact that we've got new technologies added into a gun that costs less and could potentially be more versatile than the impact that's really exciting and i'm very keen to see the response from everyone when this is launched in well today <laughs> when you see this video but thanks for watching guys i appreciate it that you take the time to support my channel and i'll see you next time